What is up guys, it's Dylan and we got a new video, boom. <laughs> Now, I know we had our little Christmas miracle with the PCA62 emulator working on our Macs, especially on El Capitan, but that was version 0.9.8. I know, not the greatest. And we came up with a lot of books. One, it was slow for some people, controller problems, a lot of hassles. To be honest, gaming in Mac is a department that is still struggling and emulators are rather on the bad side of it. So, what is the one solution to that problem? Well, two words for you. Bootcamp. Now, I've been getting a lot of comments uh, on the PC2 emulator section asking me, ask people asking me what bootcamp is and how to bootcamp and stuff like that. So, I thought I'll talk about that in this video because I think bootcamp is really, really helpful in speeding up everything, at least in the gaming department, right? Because the games get to take full advantage of your Max hardware because Max got great hardware and it's got great software if you want to be productive. But when it comes to game, we're still like, eh, not, not there yet, not there yet. And what exactly is bootcamp? Now, a lot of people have this weird confusion that bootcamp is some kind of tweak or some kind of line of code we're going to use to sideload Windows on a Mac and, you know, make things work like that. So people have a lot of curiosities, like, oh, is this, this going to mess up my Mac or is bootcamp going to be bad for my Mac? But Windows and Mac, does that mean my Mac is going to be susceptible to more viruses? Things like that. Well, first. Bootcamp is not a tweak, okay? Bootcamp is an onboard feature that all Macs come with. It's pretty simple, just go to your launcher, just, just swipe five fingers on the trackpad, go boom, and type bootcamp, and something called Bootcamp Assistant is going to pop up. It's an onboard feature of Macs, which lets you install Windows. Now, why install Windows? One, you got DirectX support. A lot of games are heavily reliant on DirectX, and it's a, it's a Microsoft's line of code, Microsoft's piece of technology. It's something that lets the games take full advantage of your hardware, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But it's 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 a transitional layer between the game and the hardware, so that the games can function better. Ooh, fancy words, but you get the point. It's something that enables games to work a lot better. So you get DirectX when you type for Windows on a Mac. Two, you get Steam which means the entire freaking Steam library of games. Games like Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse, games like Fallout, all that just works great. And three, onboard controller support. You don't, you don't need to go through any hassles, nothing. You got an Xbox 360 controller, plug it right into your Mac, it works after your bootcamp. You don't need no drivers, no nothing, just plug it right in, it works out of the box. That's, that's brilliant. Four, Emulators for Windows are coded a lot better than they are for the Mac. So let's get into the boot camping part. How to boot camp? Well, you need a few things ready before you boot camp. First, make sure that you at least got 30 gigabytes of hard drive space free. If you ain't got that, free up some space, get an external drive, move some stuff away for now. You're gonna need 30 gigabytes of space free before you boot camp. Two, you need a flash drive. Get a flash drive. If you ain't got one, get it because you're going to need that for all the drivers to be loaded into before you bootcamp because all of Apple's hardware needs drivers to work on Windows and it takes about a gigabyte of space. So a flash drive, preferably an 8 gigabyte flash drive. Get it, erase it, get it set for bootcamp. Just plug it in and it will do the rest. Thirdly, in a Windows ISO file. Now you can get that for free from Microsoft's website and you can try it for a period of 30 days yet. Now use the 30 day trial. See if you like it, if you like it, keep it, but I'm pretty sure you will like it because things just work a lot better. And four, if you're on an old MacBook Pro, I can't stress on this enough. If you are on an old MacBook Pro, something like 2011 version, something with any MacBook Pro with a super drive, get a blank DVD. You can't boot camp from the USB if you got an old MacBook Pro because of BIOS restrictions. I went through a lot of hassle and I ended up erasing my whole hard drive, forcing it to boot from a USB because it did not have direct access to the BIOS. You will run into something called an EFI boot partition table ever. Do not go for that hassle if you have an old MacBook Pro. Believe me, take my word for this. Get a blank DVD, burn your ISO to it, boot with it. No problems. Super fast. Now let's head on to the whole process of boot camping getting your Macs to run games better, getting that PC LX2 emulator better, because I'm going to show you those live frame rates and all that, so let's head to that. Let's start boot camping. So what you're looking at right now is the boot camp assistant. 
To get here is pretty simple. Go to your launch pad and type bootcamp or swipe five fingers on your MacBook MacBook trap kit trap trackpad and type bootcamp and you'll find this. Click that and ta-da, it launches the bootcamp assistant. And now we hit continue and go to the next screen. Now on the next screen, make sure all the boxes are checked so we can you can download the latest Windows ISO file and the drivers required for boot campaign. So make sure all that is checked. And now on the third screen, this is where you pick your ISO. This is for MacBooks without a super drive where you you can have the ISO file downloaded on your computer and you pick it. And if it's on the desktop, it's going to be automatically detected. If not, you'll have to locate it yourself. Pretty simple job. But if you are on a MacBook Pro with a super drive on it, make sure that your ISO file is burned onto a DVD and is in the DVD drive when you do this because it cannot boot directly from ISOs. And while doing all this, make sure you have an empty USB flash drive plugged into your USB port so that it can download the drivers to it for boot camping. Now the third screen is where you partition your hard drive. Give Windows at least 32 gigabytes of storage for for everything to work properly because if you give it 32 gigabytes, you're gonna get about 10 gigabytes to use and the best route to go is get an external hard drive for all your games, your ROMs, and your ISOs. That's what I do so that you get one terabyte or something and it's plenty of space because dumping all your files to your internal hard drive isn't really the best idea, especially when you're running multiple OSs. So yeah, just give Windows its basic, basic amount of space and then just read stuff from your external hard drive. And after the partitioning is done, it's going to restart and boot from your bootable medium, which is your ISO file, if you're if you were on your MacBook Pro or or your DVD drive if you're an older Mac. Now pick the version of Windows you want and how you want to install, follow the on-screen instructions. Pretty basic thing to do if you can read. Now you do not need a serial number to install Windows 10. It's not required. You can always just go on, hit next and go with a 30 day trial and see if you like it. See if you like where it is going and you can keep it. But I say it's a go-go. Come on, it's two operating systems and you get a lot of games on Windows side and all the productivity of Mac side, so I believe it's a win-win, you can keep it, I liked it, depends if you like it or not, but you have 30 days to complete the experiment. Now, we, nobody reads the instructions, whatever part. Now, this is the only possibly confusing part of the whole thing, picking your drive to install. Make sure you always select the drive which has boot camp written on it, hit that and hit format and format it. Format only that, do not format anything else, that is the space allocated for the boot camp. So pick that drive, hit format, and then hit install. That's about it. And then the files will start to copy. Installation just begins. And you just wait. And ta-da, we are in the world of Windows. And that's how it works. And that is Windows installed on your Mac via bootcamp. Now I am not going to walk you through this whole part of picking your username, your password, your favorite color, or your Windows ID. You can do that yourself. There's a private stuff. Do that yourself. Get it done. Log in. Apply yourself. Now, the best part about installing Windows, or at least one of the best parts about running Windows on your Mac, would be the Steam library. I mean, look at you, you get the entire library of Steam games working on your Mac. Now that is a lot of games. And plus, the additional perk of the Xbox 360 controller working out of the box. Which means, no drivers, no config, just plug it in and it works. Which is awesome. And now, let's look at the PC SX2 emulator working on the PC. There you go, everything's smooth, everything's a lot smoother than the Mac. And this is mainly because the PC emulator gets to take complete advantage of all of the Mac's hardware when it's running Windows. Unlike Vine, where it's emulator under a restricted environment, on the PC, you get full direct 3D support, so games work like they're working natively. The codes run like they're natively coded for the operating system, which means complete performance. As you see, everything's working really good, even on my really old MacBook Pro. Because I'm running a mid-2011 MacBook Pro, I guess, and it's got 8 gigs of RAM and a 500 gigabyte hard drive and an i5 processor, so definitely not the latest and greatest of specs by a mile. By a long mile, it's not the greatest, but the games still work really good. I mean, look at it. Performance is absolutely smooth. And that's the best part, because because the game is working in an environment it's natively coded for. Pro tip time. So if you want to boot into Windows or if you want to boot into Mac, this is how you do it. When your computer turns on, that's when you press the part button and you hear that boot up chime like the ding. You press down the option button. 
keep pressing the option button until you see the loader come up and you'll see these two hard drive icons with Windows and Mac on it and you pick which one you want to go to use the arrow keys navigate to it and press enter duh and that's how you pick your sides and that is all for this time i hope this video has been helpful in opening new doors to more gaming opportunities on the mac i hope you have a little more fun with your mac on the gaming department now that we can do more with steam and emulators and and windows in general to this vast library of games so until next time this is dylan saying like the video, share the joy, and subscribe. And like always, stay awesome.